I loved you, Francis, but I have to debrief Sarah first. I suppose you could, or you could hear what I have to say and see if that doesn't change things. Pritchard out. I can't believe it, Jensen. An internment camp smack dab in the middle of Detroit. Shit. You know, people have been talking about these kind of things ever since I was a kid. But to actually find evidence, to know the people running this country distrust us so much, makes you wonder if they really did close Guantanamo. You know, people have been talking about these kind of things ever since I was a kid. We need everyone on high alert. It's not only the pro ogs who might want to get a Taggart, but the ones against them too. You're saying that pro-human activists might see this visit as treachery? I'm just saying anything is possible, so keep your eyes out for suspicious characters. Right. No one relaxes until Taggart and his entourage are out of the building. Got it covered here, boss. Don't you worry. Hey, boss. I heard there was some kind of commotion at the downtown police station earlier. You know that's the precinct that was handling the investigation into the first attack against us, don't you? I think Mr. Seraph might be expecting you. We're attacked, then the police handling the investigation get attacked. I guess it's a stretch to think that the two are related. What do you want? As much as I hate to admit it, I need your help. That signal you shut down in DRV territory, it's been active for almost a year. You're telling me someone outside this company has had access to our network since before the first attack? I've detected intrusions before and shut them down swiftly every time. But whoever designed this particular algorithm is good. Very good. You've told Seraph? See, here's the thing. The intrusions were possible because of a backdoor access into our security system that I never even knew existed. The one Sanders team used to get inside our plant. I've worked here for seven years, Jensen, and this is the first time I've seen that particular access route. David Sarif created it specifically to bypass the firewall. He's hiding something, and I think you should find out what it is. Why me? Because, as far as I can tell, Sarif created that access and was streaming a lot of data through it shortly after your ex-girlfriend suggested he hire you. Don't you have some investigating to do?
Excuse me. Mr. Jensen, isn't it? Sir, you have that charity dinner? In a moment, Isaiah. I was hoping I might run into you, Mr. Jensen. Bill Taggart. The founder of the Humanity Front. I know who you are. Yes. Yes, I imagine you do. As David Sarah's top security man, I imagine you have quite the file on me. But I assure you, Mr. Jensen, I am devastated by recent events. Really? I do not support what you and your company are doing to mankind. I believe it's extremely dangerous. But abolishing human enhancement technologies will only be achieved through legal means. I'll keep that in mind. This is your first day back since the accident six months ago, isn't it? Sir, we have to go. What happened to me was no accident. Ah, my mistake. But it must have been stressful facing down a second incident so soon. I imagine it brought back all kinds of unpleasant memories. I appreciate your concern, Mr. Taggart, but it was nothing I couldn't handle. I'm a psychologist, Mr. Jensen. I know when a man is hiding behind words. The flesh may heal, but the mind is not always so resilient. You might want to keep that in mind. Now, if you'll be so kind as to excuse me. I'm curious about something, Mr. Taggart. What is it you hope to accomplish by coming here tonight? I would think that would be obvious. Your company has been viciously targeted. The violence and bloodshed that's occurred, it, it must be stopped. But I'm afraid it won't be until men of wisdom and understanding come to an agreement. About what? About the future, Mr. Jensen. This enhancement technology threatens to change the course of human evolution, to redefine what it even means to be human. You think governments can afford to let that go unregulated? You can't stop progress, Mr. Taggart. Perhaps not. But neither can we afford to sit by and watch it happen on its own. Not when we have the ability, the collective will, and foresight to influence it. I see. Thank you for illuminating me. Any time. I'm glad we had a chance to talk, Mr. Jensen. Meeting you has been very informative. You will think on what I said, won't you? You will think on what I said, won't you? You're Taggart's aide, aren't you? Dr. Isaiah Sandoval, isn't it? No need to play ignorant, Mr. Jensen. I am quite sure you have a file on me that's as thick as the one you have on Mr. Taggart. You're an outspoken activist in your own right, Dr. Sandoval. When you have seen the things that I have, you find you have no choice but to stand up and be counted. Frankly, I am surprised an ex-cop like yourself isn't more disturbed by the dangers of this technology. Augmentations help a lot of people, Doc. Handicapped, war vets. Yes, but at what cost? My own friend had his life ruined by these so-called enhancements of yours. A man much like you who had no choice but to become augmented. Yet, once he was... Too much power can make you do terrible things, Mr. Jensen. I suggest you think long and hard on that. I'd like to hear more about your friend, Dr. Sandoval. What exactly did he do? Nothing. Was he injured in the Gulf? He went on a rampage in a shopping mall, if you must know. Hoping to be gunned down by the police, rather than face a lifetime battling augmentation addiction. He was addicted to augments? They don't talk about it in those corporate brochures of yours, do they? Neuropathy dependency, rejection psychosis, any number of physical and psychological ills have resulted from this technology, and yet we rarely hear a word about them. I'm sure the literature is out there. No thanks to the throng of corporate lawyers attempting to stop it. Your friend, did he succeed? Did he suicide by cop? No. Bill Taggart talked him down. I am sure you are very busy, Mr. Jensen, as are Mr. Taggart and I. I trust you will think on what I have said. Just doing my job here, sir. I'm sure you can appreciate that. And most of your people have been kind enough to give us a wide berth, so let's keep the hassle to a minimum. Real shame what happened at your factory tonight. My condolences. We'll be out of here shortly, <coughs> and you can all relax. We'll be out of here shortly, <coughs> and you can all relax. Athena, you've been at this company a long time. I hope that's not a comment about my age, Adam. No. But I know nothing gets by you. If Sarif had done something that could compromise us, 
Mr. Seraph has only the best interests of this company in mind, Adam. I'm not questioning that. Aren't you? I've been here since the beginning. I've seen how he built this up from nothing. He cares for his people. He truly believes what we're doing is important. And he would never do anything to jeopardize it. I shouldn't have brought it up. No, you shouldn't have. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm busy. You better get in there, Adam. David's been waiting. Boss, we need to talk. Is something wrong? I'm not sure. Did you set up a private access route to bypass the company firewall right before you hired me? I <laughs> what? Pritchard said someone's been using it to access our system since before the first attack. The security measures he and I set in place never stopped them because we didn't even know the loophole existed. Ah, oh, I see. Frank's fixed that, though, right? He has now, but he's wondering why you never mentioned it. Frank's paranoid, Adam. You know that. Can a busy man forget things once in a while? You streamed an awful lot of data through that portal, boss. Right before you brought me on board. Preacher may be paranoid, but I gotta admit, I'm wondering what was in it too. Yeah, as an ex-cop, I guess you would. But the important thing is you found the hole and plugged it. We're secure now. And the information you uncovered in that FEMA facility may actually help us track these guys. So let's just stay focused on what's important. I want to, believe me. I want to catch these guys as badly as you do. But that breach is responsible for every security crisis we've had, including today's. If you want me to stop these guys, I need to know what kind of data they've had access to. You're right, you're right. I'm sorry if I seem evasive. But you can't expect me to tell you every detail of this company's operations every single day. We're at war here, and it's your job to protect us from enemies who try to take us down. You should have found that loophole without my having to tell you about it. You know... Frank wanted me to hire experts, an outside security firm to protect us, but you convinced me you could do it. Are you saying you were wrong? I think I proved myself today. And the only reason I'm worried about that loophole right now is because the data you streamed through it could have been accessed backtraced, and stolen by the men who attacked us. Our enemies might still find a way to hurt us with it. What? Well, I never considered that. I... I'm sorry, son. I guess you have proved yourself today. Your concerns about the data being compromised won't really be an issue as long as we stay strong and work together as a team. That's all I've ever tried to do here. Find the best, most qualified people I can, and bring them all together so they can complement each other. Now, Megan understood that. That's why she suggested I hire you in the first place. To help this little family of ours survive. Megan? Boss, what does Megan have to do with any of this? I thought we were discussing a security breach. She doesn't. I mean, I, I mean not, not directly. The data you're so nervous about is little more than a bunch of routine fact-finding reports, the kind of stuff I deal with every day. Megan pointed me in a direction and I followed up on it. That's all. And now that I've shared this much with you, I have to ask how your knowing the fine details will keep the rest of us any more secure. Can't you trust me to take care of things from here? Boss, six months ago, mercenaries knew stuff about this company that I didn't and used it to get past my security measures. I don't really care what kind of secrets you and Megan were keeping back then. I just want to make sure they don't endanger us again. 
Adam, I didn't mean to imply. You're right, okay? You're right. I, I really shouldn't keep this information from you. I just hope you'll understand why I did. All right. Look, the truth is, I set up a confidential data channel for a private investigator, someone who can run covert background checks on people, potential new recruits like you. You what? I had to, Adam. You were a liability, remember? You'd just been fired from SWAT. Now, Megan believed in you, but I had to be sure. Look, I don't want this to come between us. I'll send the files to your computer. You can see for yourself what he dug up. But Adam, you'd better be sure. Why? What do you mean? I mean, sometimes the past should stay in the past. Once you see that data, you can't unring the bell. When you're ready, come back and talk to me. We need to discuss our next move. Athena tells me you spoke to Sarath. Did he happen to tell you why he made us look like idiots? I'm handling it. You can imagine how relieved I am to hear that. I'll tell you what. While you follow any lead Sarath spoon feeds you, I'm going to do what I should have done in the first place and backtrace that signal. That's your pride talking. Still, get back to me if you find something. You meant when? Pretty sure I didn't.
My sister wants me to visit the hospital and see what we've done. Can you believe that? As if Seraph Industries is responsible for someone rejecting their augments. Bodies reject augmentations, that's the way it is. There are drugs out there to keep it from happening. If someone doesn't treat themselves, how is that our fault? Really shipping you off to China? What's he thinking? Know, but I couldn't get out of you this. don't send your chief of security news. halfway around the world just hours after a terrorist hey, attack goodbye. on your company? It doesn't make sense. Got the latest figures for the last quarter. Mr. Sarif won't be happy. We're still way behind Tai Young Medical in market share. Yeah, I know. What am I still doing here? I decided to stick around and get some work done since I was in the office anyway. Is it true Mr. Sarif is sending you to China? I mean, you've only just got back to work, and I would think we'd need you here. Hey, Adam. I think Frank wanted to see you. He seemed really stressed. I guess David knows what he's doing. I'd better not keep you. <laughs> Take it easy, okay? kidding me. That's what Will was saying. He heard Frank talking to David about it. Oh, and Will is a reliable source. You know, he listens to that conspiracy radio DJ all the time. I'm not so sure. The way things have been going around here lately, I was starting to wonder if the government is up to something. Those men who attacked us six months ago had to have had military training. Yeah, but not necessarily U.S. military training. Meaning what? Meaning we all know how much the Chinese want to get their hands on what we do here. And I just heard that Athena's getting Jensen in a new passport. Do the math, ladies. Adam, we're hearing the most incredible rumors around here. Someone really ought to put a stop to it. I thought Mr. Seraph sent you home tonight, Adam. You certainly had a busy first day back. Jensen, you talked to Mr. Seraph yet? I hear he may be sending you to China. I mean, a secret FEMA prison camp. Really. People believe the most ridiculous nonsense sometimes. You don't really believe the U.S. government is behind all these attacks, do you? I mean, they're one of our best clients. I hope the trip's a short one. We'll all feel a hell of a lot safer once things get back to normal around here. Here, this is for you. It's a corporate passport encoded with your biometrics. I've set up a false flag routing which should get you to Henshaw Island without any problems. You're sending me to China? What about FEMA? FEMA's got nothing to do with this, trust me. We'll have better luck in China. How can you say that? I saw the bastard who killed Megan pulling his men out of that facility. 
I left one of those men dead in its underground storage bay. I know that, Adam. Frank was monitoring the whole thing. So I also know that before he died, that man gave you an address in China. I want you to check it out. That doesn't make any sense. Look, Adam. There's a reason this company's under attack. You think it has to do with the Typhoon or with some other top secret military project that I haven't told you about? The thought had crossed my mind. Yeah, well, it doesn't. The work Megan's team was doing before they were killed, it was redefining what it means to be human. This company, Seraph Industries, was about to lead mankind to its next stage in human development, self-controlled evolution. Can't you see how scary that can be to some people? Sure. I also see how lucrative it can be for some others. It's never been about money for me, Adam. But you're right. There are people out there who don't exactly feel the same. Like who? I'm hoping you'll be able to find that answer for us in China. So get going. Farida's prepping the chopper. Hey, Mr. Jensen. Cindy left for the night about an hour ago. So did most of the others. I guess you know your way around by now, though, right? I got the front desk, but don't expect me to take any phone calls. That ain't in my contract. <laughs> Adam, is Mr. Seraph really shipping you off to China? What's he thinking? It's your pleasure, friend. See you soon.
Access granted. Now we're going to take a break for a word from our sponsor. Oh wait, I don't have no freaking sponsors. Let's get back to talking smack. The topic du jour is separatist terrorists. Listen, I have no love for the secesh, but let's raise some real tangible truth. Access granted. Access granted. Take a look. I'm a friend of Greg Thorpe. Really? Okay, I give you the egghead discount.
Silla. How may I be of service? Be sure to tell all your friends. They're just not the cops. <laughs> Thank you. 
Hey, Jensen. The boss said you were on your way. You're gonna love Hangsha. You've been there? Used to live there. I spent three, maybe four years working in the upper city. And most of my nights having fun in the lower one. You ready to go? I thought I was. How long is this gonna take, Malik? You mean the flight or the fun afterward? Don't worry. We'll be there before you know it. Climb in. 